Welcome to Fred Achando Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Kenyans are asking President William Samoy Ruto to come out and declare his stand on the hottest debate that is currently grabbing headlines, the LGBTQ. Because a few days ago, the Kenyan Supreme Court pronounced itself on this issue and declared that the LGBTQ community has got a right of association and that they can register their membership as non-governmental organizations. This verdict, this pronouncement, elicited a lot of sharp debate. Several Kenyans ganged up together to condemn this ruling, saying that this is an idea of the West and that someone is trying to force it down our throats. The reason why Kenyans feel that there is a Western country that is trying to force is trying to force this down our throat is because when this ruling was taking place, it coincided with the visit of the US First Lady, Madame Jill Biden. And then people feel that it could have come at a better time than this. On the very day when the Kenyan Supreme Court was giving a declaration that the LGBTQ have got their rights of association, in Uganda, President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni was signing an anti-gay bill into law so that should you be found practicing anything to do with lesbianism, gay or transgender, then you are liable for a jail term. Very many people have spoken against it, while there are another clique that support this verdict. But our president and his deputy, who are always very vocal, have decided to stay clear of this topic. They don't want to discuss it. And this is really sparkling a lot of speculations. And rightly so, because the president of Kenya, William Ruto, and his deputy, Rigedi Geshagwa, have always manifested their politics as men of God, as people who really love God. In fact, they have always said that their victory as the president and deputy president of Kenya respectively was delivered to them directly from God. They have gone ahead to accuse Raila Muludinga that the reason why the Zemio leader could not have ascended to power God could not allow it because they say Raila is an antichrist. So for a duo who have, you know, always pronounced themselves as people who are men of God, we really expected them to come out and declare whether they are in support of the Supreme Court ruling or they are against. The other reason why it behoves one to ask what they think about the ruling is because the LGBTQ principles, whether that of lesbianism or gay or transgender, go against the principles of Christianity and the principles of uh, Muslim. So as Christians, as they have always pronounced themselves, we really wanted to know what exactly they think about this ruling. It also goes without saying that the judiciary and the executive are brothers and sisters. They read from the same page. Their wonderful relationship dates back from the days of the BBI when they thwarted the proposals by Raila Muludinga and former president Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. Then came the verdict about the current Nairobi governor Johnson Sakaja when he was accused of not having a valid degree certificate so that he was not going to be allowed to contest for the gubernatorial position in Nairobi. The Supreme Court declared themselves and said that Sakaja has a degree. Then the biggest debate, the presidential ruling, they thwarted all the prayers of the Azimio and they declared William Ruto as the president. So their relationship is one that is very, very amicable. Nguini Mutahi is challenging William Samoy Ruto. And this is what Nguini Mutahi is saying. Nguini is saying 
Dear Ruto, what is your stand on LGBTQ? What is the House of Bishops telling you? The Supreme Court has pronounced itself on the matter. What is your position? Should Kenyans gay each other or not? That is a question from Nguni Mutahi, the political scientist. And I believe this is the feeling of very many Kenyans because they want the president and the deputy president to come out and explain what they feel. Now, instead of the president talking about this, he has chosen instead to send some of his very allies to declare their standard. We want to believe that this is what he also feels. Uh, he, he, this is he the personal Kama Chama had to Lakini Mimi, Nikiongozi Katika and Chihi, appear the majority leader. And I can give my comments uh, based on what I know on this uh, very controversial issue. Number one, if you read our constitution, the preamble, as a people, we recognize the supremacy of God, the creator of heaven and earth. Secondly, if you move further down our constitution, Article 45, it recognizes marriage as a union of people of the opposite sex. Therefore, when you read and you hear what our Supreme Court has ruled, and they have affirmed the position of the people of Kenya when they pass this constitution, that they understand, and in our culture we know that marriage is a union between two people consenting of the opposite sex. And they appreciate and say, yes, that is true as per the constitution of Kenya, but then again they move to say, much as this is not allowed, if they just want to have an association, they should be allowed. I find that to be absurd. Because then the next question that you will ask our Supreme Court, respectfully so, is when will they register or allow the union of uh, conmen, robbers, devil worshippers? Because there is a serious contradiction in the fact that you cannot tell me that what I am engaged in is an illegality as per the laws of the land, but then go ahead to grant me the opportunity to caucus and have a union of the same illegality. And that is what we find to be completely absurd. You know about our constitution as a party, UDA, we believe in the family unit and as a basis of the foundation of a good society. Therefore, I think I agree with the position that has been taken. You know, our society, is a multi-religious society. But at least, if there is one thing that we agree, from Christians to Muslims to Hindu, is in the fact that we, to the best of our knowledge and understanding, we believe that marriage is a union between a man and a woman. Anything else is strange and not an acceptable practice in our country. Thank you. And if anything, huh? If, I may add, if you listened to, or rather if you read what the Supreme Court said, they also appreciated that homosexuality remains a crime under the Kenyan Penal Code. And therefore, if you are saying this is a crime, then you also can't in the same breath say that people now are free to engage in criminal activities. And I want to affirm our position now as Member of Parliament for Kikuyu and as leader of majority in the National Assembly, we are not in any way in the near future going to be reviewing those laws. I think uh, we are also African, we have our own cultures. We shall not allow our cultures to be mutilated by cultures that are not, that are alien to us. Number two, we have bigger priorities in this country. As a party, as leaders in this nation, I think our priorities now are on the economy and nothing but the economy, period. But my question is, why is the president running away from this debate? Why can't he just come out and say, I support or I don't support? Because they are very vocal. I believe President William Samuel Ruto is between a rock and a hard place. He is facing one of the biggest political dilemma in his political career. 
Because on one side, he has captured the Episcopal churches. And they are reading from the same page, dancing to the same tune. They started way back when they were campaigning. There were even portraits of President William Samoy Ruto and the deputy Rigedi Geshago in some of these churches. And they preached his sermon. They believed this man was sent by God. Even to death, they still pray together when they are praying for rain, Sanjuji, they pray together. So William Ruto does not want to serve ties with the church because the church helps him to maintain his leadership. Remember, he's been really fighting legitimacy issues. And William Ruto understands that the church controls a number of masses. And so you play around with them, they will still stick to the narrative that William Ruto is a man of God and that he was chosen by God. So he does not want to go against the principles of Christianity. On the other hand, there is an agreement that they made with the West, the USA being the bigger brother and his twin brother, the United Kingdom. These are the foreign powers that were in the front line to catapult President William Ruto to state house. One of the things that has been a thorn in the flesh to many African presidents is the issue of the LGBTQ. The West want Africans to embrace this culture and entrench it into the cons in, in our constitution. But the people are not very ready. So President William Samoy Ruto knows very well that he cannot publicly speak against the LGBTQ because it is the idea of the West. If he does, he's going to lose out on AIDS. Barely three days after Madame Jill Biden's visit, President William Samoy Ruto was given 16 billion shillings to cushion against the drought that is ravaging the country. So if he speaks publicly against the LGBTQ, he's going to miss and lose out on this money. So you can imagine he's in a very precarious situation. If he speaks against the U.S., he's going to he's going to suffer ties with the U.S. If he speaks in support, he's going to suffer ties with the church. Which way, Mr. President? If you are his advisor, what would you tell him? So President William Samuel Ruto wants to keep quiet to keep people guessing, and in the process, he wants Kenyans to come out and declare that they are not in support of the LGBTQ so that he will go back to the West and tell them that, you see, Kenyans are not very ready uh, for this and there's nothing I can do. This is what happened with the GMO. Immediately he was sworn in as the president of Kenya. He lifted the ban on, on, on GMO, something that uh, had been there for 10 years, courtesy of the former president, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. Uhuru cared about the people and did not, he did not want pe the, the, the Kenyans to start consuming GMO without participation, the participation of, the, of all the stakeholders. But President William Samoy Ruto was serving the interest of the West. That is why without incorporating all the stakeholders, he decided to lift the ban. Kenyans made a lot of noise. The Catholic Church, Azimio, and farmers, before he knew it, it was in, the, in courts and it is lying there. They don't know how to approach it. And I know he's telling the West that I'm really ready to cooperate with what we agreed, with what we signed, but it is not very easy. And even the, the, the West can see, the USA can see that people are not very ready for the GMO, people are not very ready for the LGBTQ. And this is why President William Ruto is very quiet. You see, when he's quiet, he's not going to sabotage with the USA because they will not see him. So when he's quiet, he will still maintain their, his relationship with the USA and his relationship with the church. William Ruto needs USA now more than ever. Because Raila Molodinga has hated the political temperatures, calling out for his calling out for him to vacate office. And he has made a declaration that William Ruto is uh, illegally in office and that he read his way to state house. With all the demonstrations and mass actions that we see, Kenya is in the mood. William Ruto doesn't know what to do. On one end, he has to deal with Azimio. On the other end, ordinary Monainchi. You saw Eric Komondi the other time. And you saw the kind of uh, 
demonstration that took place against the, the China Square. So they know very well that things, they are sitting on, on a time bomb. Any soon it can uh, explode. And they really count on the USA to help them. The USA did it when Raila wanted to organize for a parallel Jamhuri Day in, 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 in Jacaranda. And Raila was summoned there or invited to Washington DC. And that is not happened. But Raila now has come up and come back in full swing. He's not listening to anybody. And uh, William Ruth knows very well that he will not manage Raila without the support of the West. Sometimes it is only the West who can come someone Raila will ring and even force them to talk to to talk with William Ruto. Without that, William Ruto will not rule this country, I can assure you. And so he knows very well that he cannot speak against it. Otherwise, at Alemewa, he will be overwhelmed by this, he will be overwhelmed by the Azimio. And that's why he's taking a very neutral stand. But Martin Luther King Jr. once said that the hottest part of hell is reserved for those who take a neutral position when their opinions are needed. And so we really need uh, William, uh, President William Ruto to come up and show us whether he's in support of the LGBTQ, whether he is against. But from the indications when Kimani Chunga spoke and Cherigai spoke, I feel that is William Ruto sending a coded message to Kenyans and to the international community that really I don't support this. I don't think Madame Rachel can support LGBTQ, neither can Madame Dorcas. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't think William Ruto will speak against this. I don't know what you think, but that is my take.